In this video I'm going to walk through the changes to Cantabile's routing diagrams. So you can see over here I've got the previous build which is build 4140 and this is the first build that introduces these changes 4150 over here and the first thing you'll notice is there's been some cosmetic changes so the colors of these routes have changed to uh, orange for audio routes to that's to match the uh, peak indicator color in these uh, level meters and the audio the sorry the MIDI routes have gone to green to match the color of the green MIDI activity indicators. I've also put uh, color indicators on the ports to indicate their type, so MIDI ports here and audio ports here with the orange indicators. And you'll also notice I've put uh, buttons on these components that match some common actions for each of these objects. So for the plugin we've got the audio bypass, the run mode and the MIDI filter button. For racks we've got the run mode and any of these buttons that you customize down here will also appear in here. And for the media player, we've just got the play, pause, and stop buttons. Okay, um, I've also made it that the uh, these uh, routes here uh, get crossed out when, or dashed, when they're disabled and not in effect. Same on the um, audio routes. So there's that as well, just to try and make it a bit more obvious the state of these things. And also these objects now, when when a plugin's bypassed, it goes into this crosshatch pattern, and when it's suspended or unloaded, it goes into an even stronger crosshatch pattern, just to give a bit more feedback as to why that plugin might not be doing what you think it's doing. Okay, um, the MIDI filter indicator here lights up green if there's a um, active MIDI filter on here. I'm just going to pick anything so you can see that lights up green just like it does in the main slot to show that there's an active MIDI filter. There's also on um, a MIDI route if you put a filter on a MIDI route. Again I'll just add something here, it doesn't matter. Um, you'll see there's a small dot here that indicates uh, MIDI, uh, MIDI filter is active on that route. Okay. Um, in the old build, um, if you created two routes that went between the exact same two uh, ports, what would happen is you just get an exact uh, overlaid uh, port uh, wire here and you couldn't tell that there's actually two routes. So if you go back to the table view here, you can see um, the two routes are there, but in the uh, routing diagram there's no indication. So in this build, it now puts the two routes slightly offset from each other, so you can tell that there's two. Okay, so I'll just get rid of that. So there's that. Uh, what else? Um, one of the biggest complaints that I've had about this whole routing diagram is managing the layout of these input and output ports. So what I've added now is, um, the, so the, the problem was that every song and every rack had stored its own layout. So if you had a layout that you liked and you wanted to use everywhere, you kind of had to replicate that and reproduce it in every song and rack. So I've added now this concept of a used, uh, using a shared port layout. So when that's turned on, like it is now, every rack and every song will get the same layout for uh, these ports. So if I open this rack here and switch to the wiring diagram, you'll see that if I make changes here, sorry, this one's got to be on shared as well you'll see that um, any changes here get reflected everywhere. Sorry, it's a bit hard to see. Okay, so as I move the environment ports here, you'll see they also update in the other um, song. So anywhere that has this use short shared port layout turned on will get the same layout. Now with, with racks, the, um, the racks own ports are always displayed at the top and they have their own layout that's always saved with the rack but the shared layout is saved uh, down uh, common and placed below the, um, the racks ports. There's also a new command in here to um, arrange, let me just get out of this, to arrange the ports. So in here you can choose um, a spacing, so I'll just choose medium to show you. The order, you can have no resorting, you can sort them by name, MIDI then audio or audio then MIDI. You can also add a gap between the groups and you can choose to arrange the both the inputs and the output ports at the same time. So if I do that, you can see it's arranged them with a bit more spacing. Um, I actually look quite like it with the tight spacing, so we'll go back to that. Okay, so there's that. And then the final thing that I've added is um, 
a new way of dragging these ports around. So normally when you drag one of these ports, it just moves its position and it kind of hops over uh, the other ports that might be in the way, um, which is good when you want to reorder things. But if you're tr just trying to change the layout, it gets a bit cumbersome. So I've added what I'm calling a push-pull mode. So if you hold the control key on and drag, it actually pushes the ports below it down. And if you um, go the other direction, you'll see that it uh, pushes them up. Okay, so it's just an easier way to um, arrange these ports. So say, for example, you wanted to insert a port into here, you can just control click, drag that down and then move that one into its place if I made enough room. Okay, so that's one new, new thing there. Um, makes it easier to re rearrange these ports. And then the final thing I've added is you can also now right click on a port and go straight to its settings. So previously over here, if you, if you right clicked here, I didn't even have the port settings. Um, but with the MIDI monitor, for example, if you right clicked here, you'd have to choose MIDI monitor and then the one you wanted again. Whereas in this build now, you can right click on a port, you can go straight to its port settings, okay, which brings up options and selects that uh, port. Um, and you can also MIDI monitor directly, so you can go straight to the MIDI monitor for that port. Um, just another shortcut to uh, make things a little bit easier. Um, and that's about it. There's a few other minor tweaks like the um, selection rectangles on these objects is now a bit more subtle. Um, previously you couldn't see the color of an object when it was selected. So if I make this red for example, right, you can actually still see the color whereas previously you couldn't because it just went completely blue. I'll do that just for completeness. Okay, so even though it's red, you can't see it. So just, just more subtle changes like that. Um, and that's about it.